As we delve into Mark chapter 2, verse 15, we find ourselves in a moment that would make the self-righteous tremble and the humble rejoice. Here, Jesus is not seated among the religious elite, the pious, or those who had seemingly attained righteousness by their own deeds. No, he is dining with tax collectors and sinners. This scene is a direct affront to the religious hypocrisy that values outward appearances over the inward condition of the heart. Mark chapter 2 verse 15 states, Now it happened, as Jesus was dining in Levi's house, that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. The image here is striking. The Holy One of God, the Messiah, in the company of those considered the most unworthy. But this is not a moment of weakness. It is a moment of divine strategy. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Consider the Pharisees' reaction to this event, which is recorded just a few verses later. They are scandalized, outraged that a supposed teacher of the law would associate with the very dregs of society. But what they fail to understand, blinded by their self-righteousness, is that Christ's mission was not to affirm the self-satisfied, but to call sinners to repentance. This is echoed in Luke chapter 19 verse 10, where Jesus declares, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. This gathering in Levi's house illustrates the very heart of the gospel. The grace of God is not extended to those who believe they have earned it, but to those who know they are in desperate need of it. It is the sick who need a physician, not the healthy. Mark chapter 2 verse 17. Jesus is not here to bolster the pride of the religious. He is here to shatter it, to bring to light the darkness hidden within. In this passage, we also see a foreshadowing of the church's mission. Just as Jesus called the outcasts and the sinners to himself, so are we called to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, as commanded in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. The church is not a sanctuary for the self-righteous, but a hospital for sinners, a place where grace abounds and transformation occurs. Jesus' association with sinners does not mean he condones their sin. Far from it. In John chapter 8, verse 11, when dealing with the woman caught in adultery, he says, Go and sin no more. Christ offers forgiveness, but with it comes the command to turn away from sin. His grace is not a license to continue in sin, but a call to holiness. Those who sat at the table with him were not left in their sin. They were called to follow him, to leave their old lives behind, just as Levi left his tax booth. The scandal of grace is that it reaches the most undeserving, the most broken, the most sinful. And yet, that is the very essence of the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 tells us that God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. This is the God we serve, a God who delights in showing mercy, who is not impressed by our righteousness, but who instead calls us to a righteousness that is found only in Christ. As we reflect on Mark chapter 2 verse 15, let us be reminded of the radical nature of the gospel. It is not a message that coddles the prideful, but one that calls sinners to repentance and new life in Christ. Let us never forget that we, too, were once sitting in the place of those tax collectors and sinners, unworthy of His presence, yet invited by His grace. And now, having received that grace, we are called to extend it to others, boldly proclaiming the gospel to a world that desperately needs to hear it.